<laughs> Frieza. Frieza or Freezer is one of the most popular, if not the most popular, villain of the entire franchise. He's evil but polite. He's ruthless but well mannered. He represents Dragon Ball Z at its best, and also Dragon Ball Super, since he's one of the MVPs of the Tournament of Power. Overall, they actually did a great job at giving back his own dignity after being frozen in GT. So, in order to celebrate the return of this great character, we are going to analyze the very first episodes of the main fight of the Namek arc. In other words, this is a brand new animation breakdown after several months of absence. This is DB Animators and welcome to the Dragon Ball Z Rewatch hashtag. Let's start off with episode 77, which features Freezer's will of revenge towards Vegeta and the others for ruining his immortality plan. It's directed and storyboarded by Minoru Okazaki and supervised by the better known Minoru, former character designer Maeda. Content wise, this episode is alright, but in terms of visuals, it's a plain letdown. Maeda is known for supervising some of the best looking episodes of the original series, mostly thanks to the support of really competent artists such as Sato, Ide, Nakatsuru and Deguchi. His corrections used to be relatively light to give characters softer traits. After Saiyan Arc, his output began getting heavier, judging from his point in sharp jaws, which we can also notice in movies 2 and 3, which he supervised. And after Eguchi's departure from Studio Junior, which happened after episode 64, three animators were promoted, Chikako Uesuji, Kurigo Iwagami and Noriko Ichibashi, whose styles are still unclear as of today, because they are heavily corrected by Maeda himself. At first this didn't seem to be a problem since episode 70 was still pretty solid and with a good direction from Weda we are not looking outstanding. On the other hand this one shows why his episodes lost that harmony they had once. Masaki Sato animates Freezer's Rage, which displays some solid artwork and also a decent impact frame before the power-up scene, but I don't think Freezer's Rage is expressed that well, because Sato's character acting is a bit lame, and his expressions are a bit stuck at this point. If a character is pissed off, I expect him to be pissed off, not just angry. At the very least, his output is solid, unlike the next scene with Piccolo and Nail, which looks like a sketch. You can tell Maeda corrected this, judging from his sharp cornered jaws, which appear pretty jarring on a frontal view. I don't know who precisely animated this bit, but the lip sync is simply terrible. Piccolo's entire face moves while it's talking. The follow-up of Freezer's power-up is animated by Nakatsuru, whose art looks fine on Freezer, but his expression on Dende is so uninspired and boring. Once again, if a character is frightened, I expect him to look frightened, not just surprised. Then Takeo Ide steps in to handle Piccolo's assimilation with Nail and also the first minutes of the second half. As we know, Ide's art style is based on square and sharp jaws, which make characters look more masculine. Usually I find this approach quite interesting, and I learned to respect it even more during his experience on Super, however, here it looks undeniably rushed and Maeda's corrections feel all over the place, despite not being that frequent. Mime side, Pickle's motivational scene is poorly executed, with another terrible lip sync and overall it's not even that well directed. In fact, let's analyze the episode direction for a moment. It comes from Minoru Okazaki, who was the general director of the original Doctor Slump series and also a regular in the original Dragon Ball, where he directed and storyboarded important episodes such as the very first one and even Pickle Daimaho's death. His output in the original was kinda good to say the least, whereas his work in DBZ has been really hit and miss, either drab and boring or just plain bad. His storyboarding has also been pretty tame and forgettable, and here is no exception. While his least bad output was in 69, during the fight between Goku and Ginyu, I cannot say the same with this, which is his very last work in the series. And sadly, it's in line with his past DBC experience, as it doesn't bring anything worth of value to a likewise disappointing episode. A good direction needs to kick up some tension, and despite having a terrific villain, there is barely no tension here. Animation-wise, it's pretty underwhelming as well. During Ida's scene, Freezer fires some key blasts at Vegeta, who simply uses Zanzo Ken to dodge them. 
it's okay to have energy attacks and teleporting, but if they aren't included in a precise fighting concept, it turns out to be a pretty sloppy and boring idea. Luckily, Sato's following scene deals with some more movements, and even though it's not that great, it still displays some nice impact frames. The next scene, though, is really weird, as it features a power struggle between Vegeta and Freezer, which looks like Nakatsuru's work, but at the same time, it doesn't. It looks indeed rushed and was probably corrected at some points, but Nakatsuru's three-quarter stances are hard to miss. Although, it makes us wonder what happened in reality. Why does it appear so tame? I don't know the exact answer, but this situation might be related to the production from movie 4, since both Nakatsuru and Sato would work as assistant supervisors, and considering their corrections were pretty much everywhere in that movie, it might make some more sense. As a whole, for Maeda's usual standards, this episode is pretty underwhelming, and I do believe this represented the time Studio Junior jumped the shark. 78 deals with Freezer's first transformation and also with an unneeded flashback sequence starring Kim Vegeta. It's supervised by Mitsuo Shindo and directed by one of the solidest directors of the original series, Yoshihiro Ueda. For those who follow me on Twitter, you might know I'm not a fan of Shindo as a supervisor, as his angular corrections appear a bit extreme and tend to ruin the key animator's work, and here is no exception once again. Thankfully, this episode is at least well directed, and Weda definitely knows how to build up a great atmosphere. Even though the presence of flashbacks throughout the first half is distracting at times, his stylistic picks are masterful. You totally need a solid glue when the episode isn't that well animated or uses clips from pre-16 material, in our case the destruction of Planet Vegeta from the TV special, otherwise it would have been like 73, which felt disjointed and random as a whole. Throughout the entire episode we can find Weda's leitmotif, that is, the use of colors. From the use of pink during scenes involving Freezer, to blue when the Saiyans and Kid Vegeta get screen time. I also quite like the fact he used a different saturation during the recycled scene from the TV special, because he tried not to make it stay out of the actual context. It's not a bad idea. Either way, the most impressive use of colors happens during second form Freezer's Death Storm, in which every single color fades in favor of black and white. This aspect is absolutely brilliant, as it gives more weight to Freezer's new intimidating appearance. From start to finish, Weda's output is easily the best thing about this episode. On the other hand, animation-wise, this is simply what you would expect from a Shindo entry, King Vegeta fighting Freezer soldiers is animated by Noriko Shibata, who is known for giving some wicked expressions on her characters, but never stood out as an animator for a very good reason. This cut is pretty slow, and even though it shows a rotation, it doesn't work due to a very poor pacing. As for King Vegeta's death, is clearly animated by Tadayoshi Yamamura, who, as we know, can provide some nice artwork and competent martial arts and with this sort of premise, is the perfect choice for handling Freezer's transformation in the second half. Sadly, some reaction shots are downplayed by Shindo's corrections, but the rest is pretty solid. Usually, when a new transformation is introduced, it needs to look on model during the first appearance, so here it makes sense. The filler with Bulma is animated by Teruisa Ryu, whose art looks more extreme than Shibata's and relies on angles much like Shindo, and I don't know if I'm ever going to mention Bulma's fillers again, because they are all dog shit and I wish they had never happened. Lastly, Shibata handles the ending scene with Freezer piercing through Krillin. Once again, it's enhanced by Weda's output, but at the same time it's ruined by Shindo's corrections. So yeah, it's a solid episode. Moving on, 79 manages to be even better than the previous episode, since it's also more animated, which is what I would expect from a Last House entry. The storyboarder and director is Tatsuya Orime, who is another great director of the original series, in his second to last experience on Dragon Ball, and once again, his contribution is excellent. 
His sense of scale is terrific and makes use of different points of view, thus creating a more three-dimensional setup and giving a better idea of how intimidating Freezer's new form is. And that shot of Vegeta clenching his fist kinda reminds me of Yoshitaka Yashima's storyboards on Super. Maybe he took it as a reference, but still. Of course, if Ueda's light motif deals with colors, Orime mostly relies on holograms, on the specific when Bulma mistakes a rock from Krillin's said, and when he's shown unconscious sinking in the bottom of the ocean. Nonetheless, the true star of this episode is Taijiro Oara, who as always animates the highest number of cuts. It's kind of ironic how he has been almost unrecognizable under Tsutomo Ono's supervision on Super, if we consider how important he was back at Last House, probably even more than Shida. Oara handles Krillin's torture procedure and the last segment of the entire second half, including Gohan's desperate effort on Freezer, which makes use of smears and is well paced, despite being a conservative cut. Of course, his freezer looks great, with some gentler and more feminine traits which are pretty much fitting on him, while his other characters look good enough, albeit with oversized ears. The scenes he didn't animate are touched on by Naoto Shishida and Masayuki Uchiyama, and as a whole, the former's output seems limited, probably due to renowned time issues. Speaking of Shida, he animates part of Gohan's rampage, which is corrected by Uchiyama and consists of a dramatic close-up followed by a flurry of punches and kicks. It's definitely not his absolute best output in Dragon Ball, even though the way Gohan throws his Mazendan looks really stylish. Not only he at least uses 5 keyframes to open his hand, but his arm withstands a dramatic twist to make the small bit unneedly complex. As for Uchiyama, he animates Gohan's final Mazendan on Freezer, resulting in a fiery red light covering the entire scene, which is actually a nice touch to mask Uchiyama's lack of detailed shading. And in spite of his overall negative reputation, his art looks fine here, and doesn't ruin a great episode. Next up is 80, which focuses on Piccolo's big entrance and also Krillin playing tag with Freezer. It's directed by Junichi Fujise and supervised by fan favorite Yukio Ibizawa and Studio Live. And to be fair, this episode is such a missed opportunity, and considering the actual content, it should have been much more memorable on paper. First of all, the overall pacing is really inconsistent, but not utterly bad, since there are some well-handled moments, but also some pretty dragged-out situations. Sure enough, Fujisa's direction is pretty hit and miss, as it switches between interesting material and really questionable picks. For example, showing Gohan's torture through Vegeta's pupil reflection is a great idea. Too bad it's ruined by the use of a minute-long flashback of Piccolo's memories with Gohan, taken from previous episodes, which is quite distracting as a result. Not to mention roughly 5 minutes of Krillin escaping from Freezer in the first half. He could have easily used his Taioken and end of the story. As per the episode highlight, it shows the episode low light at the same time. Of course, I'm referring to Piccolo's entrance, which starts off pretty strong, with Piccolo wrapped up by his white aura and with only his shade being visible. Even the soundtrack is on point. Sadly, everything falls apart when he's revealed, as we bump into the low light of this episode, Abizawa's art. I don't want to sound racist, but his art style shows some evident limits, like disproportioned muscles or massive foreheads. And even though his Piccolo is not as ugly as his Pechita, I feel his output sort of lessens what could have been a great moment. In fact, the whole episode appears as limited, as Ebisawa's corrections can also be spotted during Ida and Kanno scenes, which is a pity considering they're considerably better artists. Kanno's drawings are pretty solid as usual, albeit with a pretty tame twitchy character acting, and Ida's output certainly appears as much less extreme than Ebisawa's, with less triangular and linear traits and rounder pupils. In terms of actual animation, apart from some background animation from Ibizawa, there is nothing much to say, since this episode is basically a build-up for the fight between Piccolo and Freezer. And does it still hold up after 27 years? Well... To be fair, 81 displays the best death list they could ever accomplish. Series composer Takao Koyama as writer, series director Daisuke Nisho as storyboarder, Yoshihiro Ueda as director and Masahiro Shimanuki as supervisor. What could possibly go wrong? 
mm, like bad writing, dull storyboarding, flawed direction and disappointing animation for example. I'm not lying, I wish I could actually enjoy this episode, instead I can't, because the result is a letdown despite having a strong stuff list on paper. You even get Piccolo to fight again after a long time, and sadly it's not that good as a comeback. Starting with the positive, this episode is supervised by Shimanuki, who is a great artist as we all know, and certainly gives the right consistency art-wise. His output is really on point, especially on Piccolo and Freezer who are some of his best drawn characters. Moreover, I think his correcting method here is basically the same he adopted on Super, since not only he corrects other people's art, but also sort of redraws action scenes. In fact, we can spot his robotic and jerky close combat alongside his trademark shaking limbs and debris, even if those cuts were not directly animated by Shimanuki. However, it's not enough, because the fight isn't that well animated and isn't always visible due to the overuse of background framings with flashing lights. Quite honestly, if the most recognizable animator appears to be Tomikishi Takeuchi, you realize something is off. Besides, Takeuchi is mostly uncorrected, thus we can spot his really twitchy character acting, which is kinda unpleasant, and also his incredibly jerky movements, combined with his comic book-like action lines, which again are not that appealing. And of course, his art isn't that great either, as he makes use of the same distorted expressions over and over again. If he had used them on Freezer in Pain only, it would have worked. But the thing is, every single character shares that kind of expressivity, therefore you kinda miss the point. As for the other animators, Naoki Tate animates the scene with Freezer trying to catch Piccolo, which looks probably weaker and snappier than his current output, but at least shows a little bit of movement. You can tell Shimanuki added some impact lines, but Tate's profile of stance and pout are basically unscathed. The very next bit is animated by Masako Mizumi, who had been working at Seigasha since episode 2 of Dragon Ball, since the very beginning. Her art style was more or less akin to Takeuchi's, only less round and with less shading. Ever since Shimanuki replaced Takeuchi as animation supervisor, her work has been more or less polished, depending on how many corrections Shimanuki made. If we scroll down animation credits, we can notice Kazuya Isada's absence, maybe due to being busy working on movie 4, which might also explain why Shimanuki didn't provide key animation either. Again, it's my theory. Instead, Chikako Wizugi, Kuniko Iwagami and Noriko Ichibashi from Studio Junio are here and they definitely make us regret Isada's absence, they are nothing that terrible but nothing that great either. The whole execution is a disaster by almost every point of view. Daisuke Nisho's storyboarding is in line with his previous output of this arc, which is sadly under his usual standards, since his output in 67 was downright mediocre, while his work in 73 was a plain disaster. Same goes here, as his storyboarding falls flat, and doesn't even guarantee a solid choreography. On the other hand, Weda's direction isn't as bad, but is certainly flawed and not in line with his standards. Once again, we can find further 2 minutes of flashbacks in the second half, which is a pretty dumb move in my opinion. It's incredibly distracting and unnecessary because these flashbacks were also shown uncut, as if they were included at the last moment. Anyway, I guess Weda's touch can be traced, especially during the punishing blaster scene near the end, through his use of pink and albeit his flaws, it's fairly decent somehow. The art looks solid, we even get a cool impact frame, but M732 as its soundtrack doesn't work, because it's been so overused in this arc, it doesn't even have a precise identity anymore. Additionally, Koyama's script isn't even that perfect, and despite having Toriyama's manga as a pattern, they still decided to include a really bad filler with Vegeta being a chicken, which is not only badly written, but is also pointless since the same thing is going to happen 4 episodes later. So yeah, this episode turned out to be not that good, whilst having a theoretically strong staff list, which is a shame since this represented the return of a main character 53 episodes after his I expected much more to be honest. So this was the return of the animation breakdown on this channel after several months of absence. I hope you enjoyed the ride because I want to take on every single episode of this epic battle against a memorable villain. Thank you for watching and see you next time.
You're just a little chicken. Cheep, 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 cheep.